Seven veteran quarterbacks were 100 contract extensions prior to the 2022 regular season. All seven of those quarterbacks are currently under producing per their career standards. Let's dive into the numbers. Number one, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers signed a three-year, $150 million extension to remain with the Green Bay Packers this past March. Rodgers and the Packers are 4-7 and seven halfway through the season with a tough Eagles matchup waiting for them November 27th. Rodgers is posting six yellows in many of the passing categories this year, including 228 yards per game, a 94.3 rating, six fumbles, and a 26 touchdown pace. A damaged throwing hand thumb can certainly be factored in, but this is an offense with very li little cohesion right now. Contractually, the two sides will have to be 100% committed to each other at the end of the season in order to pre proceed as it is. A 58.3 million option bonus is set to hit the books five days into the 2023 waiver period, setting up a, a bootload of dead cap for the Packers no matter how this, this thing ends. The same thing can be said in 2024 when a 47 million option bonus will kick in. Number two, Matthew Stafford. Stafford was awarded by the Rams for a Super Bowl winning 2021 campaign with a four year 160 M's including 61.5 M's cash in 2022. Elliott find himself 3-6, heading into December, three games behind the Seahawks in the NFC West. Statistically, Stafford is completing a career-best 71% of his passes, but the yardage is down, the touchdowns are down, the interceptions are up, the fumbles are up, and the passer rating 84.6% is miserably down. Like the Packers, Elliott doesn't appear to have enough horses in the barn to run a successful offense currently. Contractually, Stafford is fully guaranteed through 2023 and 2024 fully guarantees next March. Then 10 million of 2025 guarantees March of 2024. So for all intents and purposes, there's at least 70 M's more to be squeezed out of his contract for better or worse. Number three, Russell Wilson, the biggest disappointment on this list. The mystery of Russell Wilson's lost production isn't being solved anytime soon. The last place 3-6 Denver Broncos look about as disjointed as an offense can. Russell Wilson is completing 58% of his passes. He has 5 passing TDs in 6 games. His 83.3 his passer rating puts him just behind David Mills. David fucking Mills. And he's on pace to rush for just 240 yards on the, on the ground. A facet of his game that appears to have vanished for good. Contractually, he should be heading toward a non-guaranteed 27 M salary on an aspiring contract. If not for the 161 M's guaranteed extension, he was blindly handed, handed this past September. Russell Wilson is fully guaranteed through 2024 season right now, and his 2025 salary locks in when March 2024 rolls around. There are no per game bonuses, no workout bonuses, no early roster bonuses that can be restructured or converted. It's just guaranteed for three and a half more years. That's a nightmare for the Broncos if nothing changes. Number four, Derek Carr. Derek Carr was heading into an aspiring contract year before the Raiders extended him for three years, 121.5 M's. The new deal carries 65.2 M's of potential guarantees, but only 25 M's was guaranteed at signing. Statistically speaking, Derek Carr's resume isn't as daunting as some of the names on the list but he's certainly on pace to finish with lower numbers than last year across the board. His current 91.3 passer rating is his lowest number since 2017, as his 63.5 completion rate. This is a contract to watch in the upcoming months, as it truly can be a one-year 25 deal in its simplest form. If he's healthy, the Raiders can release Carr before February 15, owing him, owing him no additional salary while taking on a measly 5.6 M's dead cap hit which is twenty one, which is twenty nine point two million saved. After this day, his thirty three M salary for twenty twenty three plus seven point five M's of twenty twenty four compensation becomes fully guaranteed. All forty million of his of this current of this is currently guaranteed for injury right now. Number five, Kyler Murray. Despite completing sixty five percent of his passes, Murray is down about thirty passing yards per game and his 83.7 passer rating is almost 17 points lower than his 2021 finish. The timing and structure of this contract have been well documented, but it's worth saying it again. As the Cardinals find themselves 4-6 and in the NFC West basement, Murray is going to earn 219 M's through 2027 from the Cardinals. 
He possesses one of the strongest contract structures in the history of the NFL. Number six, Deshaun Watson. Statistically speaking, we've got nothing from him this season. But contractually, Deshaun Watson has already cashed in 44.9 this year. When he returns to the Browns, he will pocket another 400k plus for the remainder of the 2022 season. Then it's 184 M's fully guaranteed from here on out. If he comes back and don't ball out immediately, that might be the biggest robbery in the history of the NFL. Number seven, Tom Brady. I know, I know, the GOAT. But after he unretired, the Buccaneers feed up 8.3 amps of much needed cap space by restructuring Brady's previous contract. The maneuver increased Brady's cash from 12.2 amps up to 30 amps, the second largest single season payout in his career. Through 10 games, Tom Brady's numbers aren't awful. They are just not translating into touchdowns at the near rate he used to be producing. In fact, of the six other QBs listed, listed here, Brady's 92.37 passer rating is by far the best. His 283 yards per game is by far the best, but the 12 CD passes is an all-time low for the GOAT. Contractually, this is still a one-year deal for Tom Brady as the Bucs utilize void years to spread the cap out in their favor. If he walks away after 2022, Tampa Bay will have 35.1 amps of dead cap to deal with in 2023. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments down below.